Let's do some live trading. All right, it's Book is Revenge. We're back with another episode of the Rags to Riches $500 five-year series. And today I wanted to talk about some live trading. So um, every Friday morning, obviously, I do my live trades in the Friday, I'm sorry, in the Friday market open live stream in the premium Discord. And I also want to do some of that on this stream with the small account just because it's the same stuff. Uh, but I want to highlight the importance of using small positions for riskier trades. So uh, today, for example, I took one trade on TPST. It's a stock that's up over a thousand percent right now um and i just got a very small piece of it but that small piece uh if you can just rack those up over and over and over again has a much higher likelihood of you hitting you know the thousand percent run in its entirety ever uh so let's go ahead and get my face out of the way and we'll get the chart in the way and you can see kind of what i was looking at today so if you're just doing this on your own uh, you guys probably already do this uh <laughs> all you really have to do is go to the top gainers and losers, and identify which ones have the most strength, the best volume, all that good stuff that we teach in the Penny Boys, and add that to a list. And then when it's appropriate, you're just looking for smaller entries and things like that. Uh, so that's all I did today. I just used the same exact criteria that I've been teaching. Uh, so let me kick the chart over to nine. I believe that's where I animated this on the five minute. Ah, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so all I really look for, for my trades, is uh, to look at the highs and lows. Right? That's the first step. So if I just draw this out really quick, uh, this is what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm just looking for uh, two candles to the left, two candles to the right to not breach the high or low of the candle that I'm looking for for validation. So in this case, this candle here would be the high, it would be a validated high because neither of the candles to the left or to the right, two candles apart, can exceed or break the high of this candle. So if I'm looking to validate a low, it would look like this. Same exact concept, it's just shapes and colors. I'm looking for neither of these candles to the left and neither of these candles to the right to break below the low of this candle, and that includes wicks. Okay, so if this one had a wick, um, it would be down here, and I would just look to see if any of these candles uh, were able to breach below that. So that's kind of the simplest setup. Uh, so let's go ahead and take it and look at an actual chart. So yesterday I shared this in the Discord, and it's one of the easiest breakdowns, I think, for visual uh, visualizing this stuff. So if we look at this, we can see that right here we have a high, here we have a low, here we have a lower high, right? After we identify the isolated highs and lows, we need to compare them to one another. So in this case, we've got a high here and we've got a high here. This one is higher, this one is lower, therefore this is a lower high, okay? And to trade an uptrend, I look for a higher high followed by a higher low in that order, okay? So in this case here, if I compare this one to this one, that's a higher high. And then I have a low here, and I have a low here. So that's a higher low, and it comes after the higher high. This is exactly what I like to look for. Once I see that higher high followed by a higher low, then I can look for engulfing candles to the upside. So let me kick it up to the five minute here, because this is where I actually charted it on. Um, and I also have to move this back over. <laughs> All right. So let's zoom in. And we can see here that this was on the... Uh, it's a little bit muddy right now because the the scaling, but you can see the stop loss is just placed here. So if I'm looking at these highs and lows and all that good stuff, and I see my higher high and higher low, all I need to look for at that point is an engulfing candle that's above the previous higher low. So what that looks like is once I get this higher low, uh, let's just say we got some random candles here, right? Don't really care too much about what they do. But if I see a low that's this big, and then I see an engulfing candle next to that, that's my entry right there. This is exactly what I look for. And that's exactly what I have right here between these two candles, okay? Now, there's one other condition that I need to use in order for this to be valid, and that is that the risk range, okay, needs to be smaller than my maximum tolerance. So if I'm only comfortable with a 20 cent max loss ever, it's got to be less than 20 cents between the break of this candle and the lower of these two candles, whichever is lower. So what the specifics of this setup look like, let me just erase all these. Uh, actually, I'll just, I'll just clear all these out. Uh, I can't do that because that's going to erase all the ones up top. So <laughs> um, we'll, we'll just ignore all those. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So if I'm looking at, oops, there we go. If I see a small red candle here, okay, and then I see a big engulfing candle right here, and this is my opportunity, my entry 
that I'm going to look for. I'm not just going to blindly buy every single time this happens, but I need to use this to assess the risk. Is going to be one cent above the open of the engulfed candle, the victim of the engulfing. Okay. So if this candle is at 415, my entry will be at 416. Okay. Or the entry level, I should say. So that'll be my entry. Okay. And then my stop loss will be the lower of either of these two candles, whichever is lower. Okay. That's my max risk on that trade. So if this one has a wick and it comes down to here, the stop loss will be one cent below that. Okay. So let's just draw this out as if they don't have wicks. Okay. So this would be my entry. This would be the stop loss. This level right here is my risk range. Okay. And this is the number that needs to be smaller than that max risk tolerance that I have of 20 cents, for example. Uh, and that's going to change per stock, but 20 cents is a pretty good limit for me for equities, uh, for this size account anyway, because I'm not trading anything super crazy. And then to find my potential profit, what I need to do is double that level, just double that amount. So I can put it right next to here just for the sake of drawing it more easily. <laughs> And then I add that number to the entry, and that is my target, my take profit, okay? Whether or not I want to let profits breathe, you know, that's that's a separate element altogether. But for right now, if you're just looking for consistent profits, the easiest way to do it is just knock it up to a one to two times risk reward and just lock those profits as soon as it hits that level, or at least the majority of your profits, and you should be good to go in most cases. Uh, it's just a matter of doing that consistently and without the emotions getting in the way. That's why we teach the education, and that's also why we put 70% of our money into passive growth so that we're not trying to you know make this the only way to win okay because uh, you can still take losses on this and you will it's inevitable no strategy is perfect but the goal of this is if we're only using a th uh, you know 30 percent of our portfolio and we're only using a third of that and then we're using a fifth of that for every trade um you know it shouldn't really be emotionally impactful okay so it's easier to realize the losses and kind of follow those hard cuts if the price falls down here I want to get out. No questions asked. Okay. The engulf setup is over. We formed a lower price. I don't care. I don't want to be in it. Just get it out of my face. That means I can set this level and this level immediately once I enter a trade. Okay. I could set a bracket for both of those for either all the shares, most of the shares, some of the shares. And I can also put another target level up here if I want uh, for the remainder of the shares if I do break them up. And that's exactly what I did with um, uh, the other trade that I took. So if, uh, if this is our setup, okay, we're looking for a higher high and then a higher low and then an engulfing entry. That gives us defined risk, defined profit potential. We just need to make sure there's not like a major resistance level in the way, right? That's another risk factor. Um, you know, we shouldn't really be looking at a stock unless it fits our budget, okay? So we know that if we take 30% of the portfolio, chop that into thirds, and then chop that number into five, that should give us a max share price for any trade that we take with that speculative amount, whether it's an option a stock, whatever it is. Okay. So in the case of TP, uh, I'm sorry, TPSD, uh, Tempest Therapeutics, that's exactly what I did. So if I just go down here to the two minute and I go to today, okay, we can see that there's four opportunities here where this holds true. Okay. So this one, looking at the first one here, this is a small red candle followed by at one point, what was a bullish candle. Okay. So it did break over that level. Uh, and that's how that wick formed. So if I did take that, it would have been a stop out for this range. One cent above this open, so 218 to one cent below the low, which is 212. So that would have been a six cent loss. I didn't take that one because I wasn't watching the stock. I was very busy. Um, but I did take this guy right here in this green box. So if we look at the other ones, you can see it's the same exact thing, right? Look at how small these risks are. Okay, that's a... Let's see, that's 206. Let's say we get 206 down to $2, maybe 199. That's another six cent, seven cent range. It's very easy. And I don't really care about, you know, holding on to that and hoping it comes back, right? Because it's only six or seven cents. All right. And then we have this one here that I did take. Okay. And you can see the, the fill orders right here. I just bought four shares because I was just doing about $10, I think it was. <laughs> it's a very small amount. I'm not going to trade a lot today. Uh, I'm just too busy and I just, I can't focus. So. I just wanted to trade a quick one. It was a super high risk trade because this one is up, you know, a thousand percent for the day. I think it was 800 some odd percent at the time, uh, but it just kept getting halted. So there's no reason for me to try to trade this with a big position. So 10 bucks is fine, right? Just to get the little bit of P&L because it's about the percentage return on every dollar we put into the market and how efficient we can make those dollars, not the overall, you know, I need to triple my account in a week, right? Um, every dollar that we don't put in the money is a dollar we don't expose to risk. So that's the mindset we need to adopt. And that's why, again, we put 70% of our money into passive income. So we don't have to 
try to make it, <laughs> you know, try to make it all count. So uh, this is a nice tiny risk. The entry was, uh, I think, 216, I think. And the stop loss was at uh, 209 or something. So it was another six or seven cent risk. Uh, got in on the break of this candle here. And, um, you know, nice tight stop loss. It never came down to hit that. And I just locked three shares at that one to two risk reward. So it was, a, I think, like a 13 cent profit or something like that. It wasn't big, right? Uh, but if you multiply that by three shares, it gets significant. And then the last share, I just sold somewhere up here. It just kept going and I just let it breathe, right? Uh, now there was a couple halts on the way. So it was a little bit annoying just to see the price, you know, go up and down and up and down and stop, right? Uh, but ultimately, I was just using the lows of the candles, okay? And I saw another engulf opportunity right here, but I didn't want to throw more money at it because I already had the one share, all right? So I just kind of moved the stop loss up. And then at this point, um, I just kind of followed each candle up and then that put me up to 45 cents profit. So it's not a super complicated process, but it is a difficult one to follow until you have the discipline, the patience and the emotional control, right? That's the 90% of, of trading is psychology. And that's what people struggle with the most. It's not the execution. It's not the analysis because all you literally have to do, if you want to find success is just trade engulfs. If you want, it can be that difficult. Uh, that's, that's as difficult as it needs to be, right? If you traded this one, that's a stop loss. Easy. If you traded this one, that's a win. Easy, right? Super easy, super quick, super fast, um, super effective, but being able to add onto your skill set and identify when the trend bias is in your favor like this and not taking every single entry just because you can and picking the ones that have the best potential is how we optimize those profits. The risk is exactly the same across the board if we're only taking 20 cent losses at a max, right? And the emotions, again, the emotions are the hardest part. So if you can get your emotional center and you can stay at baseline when you're trading, uh, you will be successful even if you're not profitable at first, right? And that's the difference between having successful trades where you obey your trading plan, follow it consistently, cut losses without question, and a profitable trade, which is one that yields a cash result, okay? I don't care if I take small losses because A, I get them back, okay? Because <laughs> if I take a loss, I don't re-enter that stock for 30 days. I get 100% of that back on my taxes up to a limit, obviously, and I can't give tax advice and all that, but that's how, it's just how it works for me. Um, you know, if I don't use it this year, it carries forward. I'm okay with that. Um, but that, that understanding of that just tells me that I can keep throwing every single dollar that I lose. I can just throw it right back in my portfolio year after year after year until it becomes a win. And then I have that win that I can reinvest. So that takes a lot of pressure off. And that's just, again, understanding what not to do. And a lot of new traders don't know this stuff. So that's why I'm doing this series. So uh, one other thing that you can do, and I'm just going to touch on the trading aspect of it a little bit more. Um, one other thing that you can do is just kick up those time frames. If you find yourself, if you take three losses in a row, A, you shouldn't have been re-entering that stock, in my opinion, because you're sacrificing your tax advantage. Um, but if you're just constantly finding yourself having trouble, let me just refresh this so you guys can see. Um, if you're having trouble letting things breathe and, and finding those those clean entries and stuff, kick up the time frames. Uh, go to the five minute, go to the 15 minute, go to the 30 minute, go to the hour, go to the daily chart. Uh, that's where you're going to find more stable price action. And this will count for more. It'll be more effective. Uh, you're probably going to have fewer signals if your max risk is like 20 cents, but that's okay because we don't really care about trading more. We care about making more from our trades. So uh, that's the way to do it, in my opinion. It's just shifting that mindset. So one other thing I wanted to touch on, because I, I don't have a lot of time for this stream, is something Big Frosty sent me, one of our one of our premium members. So then um, this is a very valid point <clears throat> uh, and part of the dividend stuff that I intend to cover a little bit more in depth when we get to those other strategies. Uh, here's just a, a very simple infographic showing the monthly payouts for these three tickers. So Coca-Cola, Caterpillar, and Pepsi all have quarterly dividends, and they're all about you know two and a half to three percent. And you can see here that January you'll get paid from Pepsi, February you'll get paid from Caterpillar, March you'll get paid from Pepsi. Uh, April, <laughs> sorry, I had a, a bit of a gap there in my brain. Uh, April, you'll get paid from Coca-Cola. May, Caterpillar. June, Pepsi. July, Coca-Cola. So it just rotates month after month after month. Even though they're quarterly payments, you're getting them uh, offset, 
So what that does is it stabilizes those dividend payments in your portfolio so you can reinvest consistently rather than if they were all paid out in January and all paid out in March, all paid out in June, and so on and so forth, because that would be very good for those, you know, third months, but the two months in between would be very flat. Um, so yeah, that's just another really cool aspect of our reinvestment strategy that we should all be using. And um, it's cool. I like it. So thank you, Big Frosty. Special shout out to you. Uh, I did have it on my list of, of topics, but this is, I mean, that consolidates a lot of information that I plan on throwing in here. So <laughs> I appreciate it. Just keep it short and sweet. Uh, all right. So I'm going to end the stream here. I appreciate you guys all for watching. And remember, uh, you know, if you guys hit the like, subscribe, follow, whatever it is on whatever platform this is on, uh, ideally it's YouTube. But um, the more views this channel gets, the more it will rank up. And I'm not trying to grow as a content creator. I'm not, you know, trying to monetize YouTube or anything like that. But what I am trying to do is reach people. So the more you guys watch, engage, all that good stuff, you hit the like button. Uh, I know it's a, an effort that I'm asking but uh, if you like this series and think that it has value and want to see other people also adopt this kind of mindset and find financial success, uh, it's going to it's gonna need some action from you guys. I, can't, I can only post videos, right? <laughs> I can go in and like my own stuff like a cringe lord. But um, if you guys watch and you guys like and you guys subscribe and you guys comment and all that good stuff, um, that is what really grows exposure. And that's what's going to allow other people to see this stuff. And this is 100% free. I'm not trying to do a sales pitch. It's nothing. Uh, I'm not getting anything from this other than knowing that people are able to uh, grow financially. Because, you know, they don't teach this stuff in schools. <laughs> so I want to be able to make sure that everyone knows that this stuff is out there and that they're not intimidated by the stock market. Because, you know, it's definitely has a reputation for being dangerous, gambly, and, um, you know, very confusing. But it doesn't have to be. Right. So I will be going over a lot of the beginner stuff a little bit later on in the series. And for right now, I just kind of wanted to get this up and running. But I just wanted to thank you guys all for watching and for doing all that stuff because that is helping grow tremendously. So I appreciate it and uh, look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.